Hi, this is Dan Bullard, retired electronics engineer out here on the front deck of my houseboat. Um, boat just went by a little while ago, so we'll see some ripples. You know, I spend a lot of my time sitting out here on the front deck looking out that away, and I discovered some really interesting things about harmonics and stuff. I, you know, I'll tell you about it some other time, but it's pretty cool. I think I got it figured out. The water does an FFT for us. It's really wonderful. Um, I want to show you this animation that I did some time ago. And I've used it in LinkedIn and stuff, but those people are fucking idiots. You know, the people that I work with and stuff, they're just morons, you know. I mean, I... One of the beautiful things about my career was that I was a trainer. I didn't really have to do anything. But what happened was, as I went through my career, I was working, teaching people, and people would have questions. Motorola, um, Northern Telecom, they'd have questions and they'd call me up. Why me? Because I was a trainer and I trained them and they knew me and I knew them. So when they called me and I talked to them, we would be on the same page. And I learned a lot. And I didn't have to actually do a lot of actual work, which was great. And I got paid big bucks, as my boss said at the time. But um, I learned a lot. And these guys, design engineers, don't know a goddamn thing. Those guys over at Stack Overflow, they're complete idiots. Design engineers don't know anything. Test engineers do. And that's because we have to implement tests for everything that the design engineers and their test engineers work out about these devices. So when you see a data sheet, everything on that data sheet was tested by a guy like me. Okay? And some of those things, how do you test those? Well, it can get tricky, especially given the variability of the hardware and the things you've got to do and the and the test time and the options that you have. But I want to show you this um, really cool thing that I did, this animation. I don't do hand-drawn animations. I don't get, I get out the spirograph and the protractor and draw shit, okay? I use Excel. So what I did in this case is I used my Excel spreadsheet. I've got a bunch of them on my PC, which is now in the bottom of a dumpster or probably buried somewhere. Um, thank God. <laughs> I got no respect for PCs, other than I can do Excel on them. But, um, in this animation, I made a distorted sine wave by editing my VLOOKUP table, which is how I do a transfer function. I simulate a transfer function. 10,001 points. And as I showed you in another video, that's not really enough, but it's it's got to be enough because it takes so friggin' long to do these simulations. And any time you do an FFT, the whole spreadsheet recalculates. At some point I learned that if I had multiple spreadsheets open, any recalc on any page meant every page open would be recalculated. Boy, that'll really slow you down. <laughs> so I have the minimum amount of stuff that I need to do these things, but it still it takes 45 minutes, hour, hour and a half to do these simulations. So I added the, the uh, VLOOKUP table to put in a clipping at various points in the wave. And I can do both the top and bottom, or the top and bottom together. And so I can, I can do any kind of distortion you want to do. It gets wild. It gets incredibly insane. And I really wanted to do that for distortion. I wanted to let people use that, but it's too hard to explain to people how to use it. And so um, I give you a basic one that you can use. If you go to my website and download it, you can find uh, a couple of them, several of them. Um, one involves QAM, which I did another video on. But one of them is a real simple version of the ones that I use. So I mess with these transfer functions, which you'll have to build on your own, and then I do an FFT on it, and then I extract out of the Fourier transform, 
I get the rectangular data, which is sine and cosine amplitudes, and then I extract the magnitude and the phase, and like that dickhead over on Stack Overflow, Dave, P Dave Teal, I think it was, said that my phases were wrong or something. No, you, you don't see the phase when you look at a spectrum. You want to see the phase, you got to look at the phase. You know, the spectrum doesn't contain the phase, okay? I mean, the, the magnitude does not contain the phase. The magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares of the real and the imaginary. The phase is another thing entirely. It's the tangent of one or the other. I forget how it goes, but uh, I don't need to remember. It's in my Excel spreadsheet. And so I extract the magnitudes and the phases, and then I in generate individually each harmonic as a wave from the magnitude and the phase that I got from the uh, FFT. Now, those waveforms are too small to look at. If you don't magnify them, you'll never see how the harmonics affect the wave. You'll see the wave change, but you won't be able to tell the harmonics to do anything. So, in this example, I'm magnifying the harmonics, I think, by a factor of 10, but I don't think I wrote it down. <laughs> so I don't really know, but you know, you magnify it until you get everything where you can see it. And so, in this animation, you can see that I'm clipping the top and bottom of the wave, and you can see the harmonics, the odd harmonics are blue, the even harmonics are red, and you can see them get very large. And then it switches to, you, to look only at the positive peak clipping. And now you can see the even harmonics come up. Before, the even harmonics were flat. Why is that? Now, Buller Laws of Harmonics number three says, the even harmonics don't appear when there's symmetrical distortion because they cancel each other out. Now, you know, you could argue that with me, but I'm going to claim that I'm right because it makes Law 1 work. Law 1 won't work without Law 3. Law 1 says that the amplitudes of the harmonics come from the area that's distorted. And that's true if you distort the top of a waveform then the odd and even harmonics come up, and if you look at them, the amplitude of the harmonics is a result of the area that was distorted. But if you distort the top and bottom of the wave symmetrically, that's no longer true, unless you say, well, yeah, but the even harmonics are not there because they, don't can they cancel each other out. And that's the only way to look at it. Now, if you want to see how it works, follow this animation. I'm clipping the top and bottom of the wave. You can see the odd harmonics increase in amplitude to where they get really big. But notice the even harmonics don't do anything. And then I clip only the top and the odd and even harmonics come together. Now, what is it that the even harmonics are doing? Let's look at just that portion. What is it that the even harmonics are doing? Ah, they're canceling the distortion that would happen on the negative side of the wave. So the negative peak cannot get a clip, a, a clipping, if the even harmonics cancel it out on that side. But if I clipped, and I don't have a video of that, but if I clip the bottom of the wave only, then the even harmonics would be in the opposite phase. So they wouldn't cancel the odd harmonics that are occurring here. They would cancel the odd harmonics that are occurring on the positive peak. So that's really the way to look at it. Now, if you watch this, you know, I'm going to let it play while I talk. You just think about it. You're the god of harmonics, and you have to create waveforms with harmonics. That's your job. How would you do it? When something is not symmetrical, it gets clipped on just the top or just the bottom and you've got to find a way to keep the even I'm sorry the odd harmonics from distorting the other side and what do you do you use the even harmonics to prevent that so the even harmonics appear in an asymmetrical clipping or asymmetrical distortion to prevent the distortion from happening 
on the other side. But if you have a symmetrical clipping, you don't need the even harmonics, but you do need double the amplitude of the odd harmonics because the odd harmonics are not big enough to do it alone unless you make them really big. So the odd harmonics have to get really big when the symmetrical, when the distortion is symmetrical. But when the distortion is not symmetrical, the odd harmonics have the help of the even harmonics, which not only help the odd harmonics create the distortion, but they also prevent the distortion from happening on the negative side. This is the way it really works. Don't listen to those other people. They're all idiots. All right. That's enough for now. This is Dan Bullard on the river. See you later.